On today's Try to Finish Something, I'm going to try and finish something. I have, if you watched my last podcast, it's like the good old days, two videos in a short amount of time. I talked about this cargo container that I have been working on for a very long time. And it's not that I've run into any issues. All right, here's a little bit about me. I, I have a, a small issue where I'll get stuck on a build and then there's this shiny object over here that I want to then focus on and I'll divert my attention and I'll start working on that. And that's why I started this channel in the first place, to try and finish something. And it's not that I forget about those other projects. I run into that problem and then in the back of my head I'm trying to solve that problem and I will get back to the other builds that are left unfinished. But the project that I want to finish I didn't run into any problems. It's just a long build with a lot of detail, and I, I obsess about every single detail, even things that people are never going to see. This is a trashed, destroyed, weathered cargo container, and I obsess over every little detail to make sure that I am satisfied with it. When I'm done with this prop, I want it to look like it's straight off of the Star Wars set. I want this to be something that if John Favreau is strolling through Instagram, he sees it and goes, oh my, I need to contact this guy. It's not gonna happen, but that's the kind of look that I want in this finished container. And I have just a few things to wrap up and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and finish this biatch. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was going so good until then. Eh, I don't have time to re-record this. I'm going to finish my Galaxy's Edge inspired Star Wars cargo container. Uh, on today's Try to Finish Something. All right, so here it is. This is the military panel that I showed you before that I picked up at a surplus store near me, and it has so many great greeblies on it that I will eventually get to, but this code log will be the manual data log for my cargo container, and as I so inappropriately terribly mentioned in my podcast this week, I do want to put things in holes, so I'm going to need to take measurements of this slot. Ugh, you see that there? I I really have to stop picking up my cuticles. I'm not sure why I do it right there on my thumb. It always hurts after, but it doesn't seem to stop me. All right, now look away. This could be slightly suggestive. Oh my, I'm putting things in holes. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, this is a family show. Moving on. I'm heading off to the free program box matic to design the slot that will need to be recessed into the container. It's just a simple puzzle edge box. And it fits. Now this part you will never see, so I don't really care how it looks, but I'm off to design the outside, off to Adobe Illustrator for my own original design. No stealing ideas from anyone, Martine of Dune Sea Outpost. Well, I guess technically it's stolen from this military container, but I don't think that counts, right? All right, moving on. I'm going to use a few greeblies from my color test panel that I did on the channel a while back. Now, just a basic test fit assembly, just to make sure that everything fits, and it seems to. Now, I also designed the same puzzle edge pieces into this face so that it had a way to secure to the face and I can glue it. And I wanted to add a bit more strength since I would be dropping the data log into this slot. So I designed a few pieces to give me more surface area to glue to. And I also designed a piece to hide that puzzle edge opening. And everything looks good. Time for some paint, and I have an idea. This was something that was actually an accident years ago on a project, and I wanted to see if I could do it again, this time on purpose. First a final assembly, and then glue up of the insert box part. 
And again, this does not have to be pretty. No one's ever going to see it. So here's what I did trying to recreate what was an accident years ago, and it worked. I sprayed this with a gray enamel paint first, and then I hit it with my flat black primer that was not an enamel. And as that enamel dried, it kind of shrinks a bit and gives me these hairline cracks all over the paint, which matches the peeling paint on my military container that I'm trying to match. See, sometimes these accidents actually work out. And these are those little things that no one is ever going to notice except me. And these are the things that I obsess over and spend so much time on. All right, anyway, time for some toothpaste so that I can do some color masking and give it another coat of color. Those will eventually be chips. And now that that red's on it, for some reason, the cracks are even a little more visible. So that's actually a good thing. Time to wipe off this toothpaste. Ah, oh, I love the smell of a minty fresh prop in the morning. All right, all I'm doing here is I'm just scratching up that mating surface where I will glue on that cover plate to give it more bite to hold on to. And you see, I painted it that green of the container. I'm always looking to add accents of color and tie in the original colors to make the props look more cohesive and like they go together. And me being the one trick pony, <laughs> it's time for some weathering. I'm just starting with my brown and black water-based oils to give me that greasy, oily weathering that the original container has, and I want this to have as well. Now I'm just adding the Greeblies on, and then I will add more weathering. Then it will get yet another pass of weathering once it's in its final place inside the container. And that container has some pretty thick metal on it and cutting all of these holes is not easy. Now on this faceplate, I had put three holes for some LEDs and I hooked them up to a simple model train relay to give me some blinking and it's time for another round of weathering. Mmm, so blinky. Ah, and this package just arrived. I want to open this and see what Martine of Dune Sea Outpost had sent me. All right. I can't lie to you. This box I actually got a couple weeks ago. I opened it in a FaceTime call with Martine of Dune Sea Outpost. I already know what's inside. I already know it's awesome. I actually rewrapped it and put it back in the box just so that I could open it in front of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm so lame. All right, back to the video. My God, this, this panel is amazing. It's so pretty, it's actually too pretty for this container. I want to repaint at least this middle gray panel to a color that I already have on the container to tie this all together. Now the rest of it, I'm probably just going to weather. I'm honestly not even sure if this thing comes off. I probably should have had some communication with Martine about my plans so that I knew if this came off and it would make this easier. Dear God, how long are these bolts? <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if this thing was ever coming apart. He makes some quality stuff. So this gray panel, I want this to be the army container green so that I have a color match, but I want to mask out this heat sink because I want that to stay black. So I'm back. Three layers of paint, a darker gray first, toothpaste, then black, toothpaste, and then green. And I'm just wiping off the toothpaste to reveal the chipping that will match the original military container. And on to the weathering of this green part of the panel. Brown and black water-based oils and blending in some yellow, burnt orange, and some green acrylics just to change up the tones of color here and there.
Now, it's time to weather the rest of this pretty panel and to knock back all of this shine because, you know, this cargo container has traveled the galaxy, getting knocked around in every port. It was one time thrown into a smuggler's cargo hold to avoid detection from Empire troops. Those rebels, well, they're now dead, and this container was recovered. See, this container has more stories than I do, and that's a lot. <laughs> and I want this container to show it. The outside of this military container has these chips in the paint where the rust kind of ate through the paint and the rust bled out. And there are these multicolored layers and I want to recreate that here in this corner. I just have a dry brush and I'm feathering out that rust drip a bit. And then I'm going to add a rust ring where the paint had chipped off and put black in the center to achieve my look. And I want to make sure that this doesn't look too uniform and perfect. Yes. I am obsessing over chips and dirt. Now to reattach the green panel, and I'm not going to show you every second of the weathering because this video would be two hours long. Let's just say it's more of the same and then some assembly. But before I cut more holes in that military container, it's going to need a good old fashioned prop wash. Let's do this sexy style. <laughs> Don't pretend you aren't going to watch that part again. You are, and you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Now, I just took blue painter's tape, and I gave it a similar pattern to the Galaxy's Edge containers, and I weathered the crap out of the red to fit the look of the rust and drips that the container already had. Now, on to the number. Now, I know that the numbers at Galaxy's Edge have significance, that being the years that the first three movies came out, and I wanted to have significance with my number. The number will be 53. The amount of money I made from my first check from YouTube. Yep, for those that keep asking why I don't just do YouTube full time, 53 cents. And the funny thing is, I, I was actually thrilled. I thought anything from me making these videos and you watching them was such a huge compliment. And, and thank you very much. I took that 53 cents with pride. And I'm doing this completely low tech making a stencil and it doesn't have to be perfect. I just printed it out on paper. I'm cutting it out with an X-Acto blade and I'm not even using a ruler. Then I'm just gonna tape it down on the container, spray it with yellow and weather it. And here it is, Cargo Container 53. I'm pretty happy with the weathering and I think it matches the original container pretty seamlessly. All right, the holes are cut. Damn, that metal, it was really thick. All right, my light is in. You saw that on my previous podcast and the manual data log is in. Now, onto the wiring. I really don't want this to be battery operated and I buy these power bricks from Amazon and they have the ability to change the voltage and put on different tips so that you can change it. I don't know how many times this thing is twisted. I cannot get this twist tie off of this. I. All right, <clears throat> moving on. So yes, there are different tips and you can put one on that has a positive and negative screw post and you can drag all of these wires together and power everything from this one wall wart. 
Oh yeah, the drill in the background. It took forever to drill a hole for the cord to come out of this thing, and you probably don't want to watch me just twisting a bunch of wires together, do you? I just love these wall warts because they have the ability to adjust the voltage right there on the back. And I'm hoping that this video does something to win some of these people back. I lost quite a few people after Dunsey Outpost and I have the challenge in the Facebook nerd group because, I, I, I don't know, I, I guess they didn't get the joke, and then I lost a few people after I did two podcasts in a row because nobody seems to like those. Oh well, I I enjoy making them and I am glad there are those of you that enjoy watching them. And here it is. Cargo Container 53 has a working service light. The Cargo Container service panel is wired and working. The Droid Socket data manifest port is lit and working. And the manual data manifest pad is also lit and working. Now, let's just stare at these pictures outside of my build room for just a second. I'm gonna share another secret. All of the bolts that connect the lid to the base are in, and there are a lot of them. All the wires are soldered. I've got heat shrink tubing on the wires. That's all inside and connected. And now, this thing won't fit through the door into my build room. I never bothered to measure it. So, an hour and a half later, I took it all apart and reassembled it. It's now the new home to my Glowforge in my Star Wars build room, and I'm calling this Star Wars Cargo Container Finished. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel, or resubscribe if you unsubscribed, and maybe this will help. Oh yeah. <laughs> or tell a friend about it and consider becoming a Patreon member or grabbing something off my Amazon wish list. And as always, if you didn't, just keep it to yourself and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something. And don't forget, stick around. Glamour Shots next and thanks for watching.